Hey kids, welcome to Crossways Kid Venture Kids Online. I'm Lauren and this is Maya. Hi everybody! In case you're new at Kid Venture Kids Online, I should let you know that Kid Venture Kids is a great place for kids to learn about God, faith, and even life apps. What are life apps? Life apps are just our way of talking about what God can work out inside of you to change the world around you. Things like love, respect, and forgiveness. And don't forget that we do that with a lot of faith field fun to help you grow your faith in Jesus Christ. And don't forget, putting your faith into action kid style. Hey, you can even stand up, sing, and dance with the worship music. And now it's time to get started. Let's start with a drum roll on your knees, everybody. Three, Three two, one. We're gonna dance, lift our hands. A gift so great It's Christmas time Yeah, it's Christmas time He's the light of the world Come down to us From heaven now everyone sing
stranger Jesus, he is a savior He is showing the world the love of God
halls with lots of gift bags. Fa la 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 la. With my name on all the name tags. Fa la 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 la. Hey, I'm Lawson, and I know the most important thing on your mind this Christmas season. How can I give Lawson a super amazing gift? Well, for starters, you can send packages to this address right here. Whoa, 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 no, no, no. You can't do that, Lawson. Okay, you're right, sorry. Well, you can just send me cash to my Venmo instead. Anyways, <laughs> in the meantime, I've got an awesome story for you today. See, my cousin knows this kid, Grayson, and Grayson is totally ready for Christmas. He's got his favorite Christmas shirt, his favorite Christmas music, and most importantly, his Christmas wish list. There's exactly one thing on Grayson's list. The Class 5 Creator Cam! The cam can take video, edit, and do special effects. Grayson's been begging his parents for the Creator Cam for months. Please, 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 please! Since the summer. Please, 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 please! Now Grayson spends every spare minute reminding his parents what he wants. At meals. At work. And in between. The creator cam is the only thing Grayson can think of. Even at school. 9 sevenths divided by 3 twelfths equals one creator cam! Grayson checks every day to see if there's a box under the tree with his name. He grumbles, there's nothing here yet. And his mom says, well, you could do something about that. And Grayson exclaims, me? And then he finally gets it. He's been so wrapped up in getting, he totally missed giving. Grayson hops to it and puts his creative energy to work. He whips up a super awesome photo collage for his mom, and he makes a special certificate for his dad promising to spend an hour doing yard work every Saturday without complaining. And he creates a coupon booklet for his little sister to spend time building Legos with her. Grayson even finds boxes and wraps the gifts up himself with a little extra flourish. And as Grayson checks out his work, he realizes that for the moment, he's even more excited about giving these amazing gifts than getting a creator cam. And he does his best Christmas dance moves to celebrate. So kids, never overdo the wishless reminders. But do remember that Christmas is all about celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. You know what, just forget the Venmo thing. Knowing that I added a little joy to your Christmas is already a pretty awesome gift. Although I wouldn't say no to an Amazon gift card, no, like $50, Lawson. $60. $80, mm -mm, mm -mm. $100, mm -mm. okay, all right. sorry. Anyways, Merry Christmas to you all. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, what's the big idea? Hey, what's the big idea? Lab. This month, we're celebrating Christmas. Well, we take a look at the story of two surprise visits. Oh, and we're also going to be doing this. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. <laughs> we're talking about Christmas, which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. You know what there is a lot of at Christmas? What? Surprises. I love surprises. Great. <laughs> 
So you're going to surprise me? Okay. Have you ever watched A Christmas Carol? Yes, well, there's the Scrooge. Every fool who goes around with a Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a steak of holly through his heart. And he's visited by three spirits that help him understand the true meaning of Christmas. So you are going to get three surprise visits. By what or who? Just be patient. Now, you know what happens in your body when you get startled? Here, look at my hand. Is it shaking? Nope. So why? <laughs> now you're shaking. But, yeah, I wasn't expecting a six foot polar bear thing. Exactly. You got startled. When you are startled, a part of your brain called the hypothalamus is triggered. The hypothalamus sends signals to the adrenal gland and your whole system floods with adrenaline, causing your heart to pump blood more forcefully to your muscles. My heart is definitely pounding. But you don't actually need to run for your life. Yeah, he's, he's kind of cute. He's cuter over here. Right, so your parasympathetic nervous system has kicked in and stopped the adrenaline and lower your heart rate back to normal. Just in time for another visitor? I'm not going to tell you. Okay, we can't do this all day. There is nothing that you can do that's gonna... Oh. Whoa! That is strong! What is that? Your next surprise visitor. Yes, but what is it? Limburger cheese, one of the stinkiest foods in the world. It smells like feet! It's fermented with the same bacteria that makes your feet smell. Blech. I'm ready for an unsurprise visitor. It's time for... The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. We're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. But over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, just like a yo-yo. Then, foreign nations invaded and captured the Israelites. They must have wondered if God still loved them and had a plan for them. While they were captive, God spoke through prophets about the great rescuer God would send. But then, for hundreds of years, Silence. Not a single recorded word from God. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone! So, we have made the leap from the stories of the Jewish people we find in the Old Testament in our Bibles to the stories of Jesus and the church we find in the New Testament. And we're about to see how God's amazing rescue plan plays out. It's been a long wait, like hundreds of years. God's people are now ruled by the Romans. They're not free. And there's still a lot of work God has to do in their hearts. There was a priest named Zechariah. He and his wife, Elizabeth, faithfully served God, but they had no children. Zechariah and Elizabeth had prayed over and over and over to have a baby but they believed they were past the age it could ever happen. Then, one day, Zechariah was chosen to enter the temple and burn incense before God while his group of priests was serving. This was an amazing opportunity for Zechariah. As Zechariah stood before the altar, a glorious angel from God appeared before him. Zechariah was totally blown away, but the angel told him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will have a child. You must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit before he's even born and bring back many people to God. He will prepare the way for the Lord. Whoa! 
Zachariah's mind must have been reeling. I mean, God was promising a child, and not just any kid, but one who would be a powerful leader for God. How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, and my wife is old too. I am Gabriel. I serve God. I have been sent to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent until after John is born, because you did not believe my words. Ouch! Zechariah didn't have anything to say to this, because he couldn't. God had taken away his ability to speak. When he left the temple, the other priests tried to find out why Zechariah had been in there so long. But he could only tell them in gestures, like charades. It must have been a double shock for Elizabeth when Zechariah got home. Not only was he unable to speak, but he had a pretty unbelievable story to share. She must have been overjoyed, though, when God's words came true and she became pregnant. The Lord, the Lord has been kind to me. He has taken away my shame among the people. Now, Elizabeth and Zechariah's story wasn't over, but we need to take a quick detour because several days journey away in the town of Nazareth, Elizabeth's cousin Mary was about to receive some amazing news too. Mary was just an ordinary girl living in an ordinary small town. But even though her life seemed perfectly ordinary, her heart was not. Mary loved and worshiped God with everything she had. And one morning, a glorious messenger from God appeared to Mary. Greetings, the Lord has blessed you in a special way. Mary was completely shocked. Obviously. I, I don't understand what you're telling me. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king and he will rule forever over his people. How can this happen? The Holy Spirit will make it happen. In fact, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby even though she is old and people thought she could not have children. That's because what God says will always come true. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Mary must have had so many questions, but she chose to trust God. She wanted to see for herself how God was working. So she took a trip to see her cousin Elizabeth. It would have taken days of hard travel, but at last, she arrived in the hill country of Judea, where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived. Elizabeth, it's so good to see you. God has blessed you more than any other women, and blessed is the child you will have. But why is God so kind to me? Why has the mother of my Lord come to me? Well, how, how did you know? As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You believed that the Lord would keep his promises to you. Mary stayed with Elizabeth several months. During that time, the joy in her heart overflowed. My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my savior. He's taken note of me even though I'm not considered important. And after three months, Mary went home. Soon after that, it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby. All of Zachariah and Elizabeth's relatives turned up to celebrate. Oh, hi there, little Zachariah. No, he must be called John. Oh, but no one else in the family has that name. Everyone turned to Zachariah to get his say, but of course, he still couldn't talk. So he gestured for something to write with. Zachariah wrote, his name is John. And immediately, he could speak. <clears throat> John, his, his name is John, praise God. Everyone was filled with amazement and the news spread throughout the whole region as they asked, what is this child going to be? The end, or at least, to be continued. Can you imagine if an angel showed up right here? That would trigger some adrenaline for sure. <laughs> or imagine being Mary or Elizabeth. 
Mary thought it was impossible for her to have a baby, and Elizabeth thought it was impossible for her because of her age. But anything is possible with God. So what's our part in the story? Well, we all have things in our lives that seem pretty impossible. Maybe your mom and dad really want to do a family hike up a tall mountain, and you feel like there's no way you can make it. Or maybe your best friend moved away, and you won't get to see her until next summer, and it feels totally impossible to wait. Or maybe you have a ginormous book report, or a really hard test. You know, when something feels overwhelming and impossible, stop. Take a deep breath. Remember how God has done the impossible. Like giving a baby to Zachariah and Elizabeth. Or parting the Red Sea so the Israelites could walk right through it. Or creating the entire universe. Exactly. You can even think of times when God has done something that seemed impossible for someone in your family. Or even you. Ask God to give you courage and strength to keep going, knowing anything is possible with God. I feel like I could climb a ginormous mountain right now. Hey, go for it! I'll see you guys next time. Bye, Bye. Erica. So here's the thing. Anything is possible with God. Yep, even this. <gasps> oh, who's this little guy? Your third surprise visitor. Now this is the kind of surprise I like. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time. <laughs>
yes. Yes, you are right. Okay, maybe just nod at me for the easy ones. Okay, all right, so what are we gonna do now? John's lost his voice and I have to continue to do the show without him. Uh, maybe play a game? Uh, one that's uh, like thematic, but also it fits with your specific malady? Uh, like, um, what can we do, what can we do? Oh, oh, oh you got an idea. What, what, okay, you gonna write it down? Okay, great, great. Boy, this is gonna be good. What have you got? Looks like we're playing Christmas Carol Charades. Christmas Carol Charades. So here's how it's gonna work. John will pick the name of a Christmas Carol from this hat. Uh, then he'll have to use everything except his voice to try and get me to guess it. You guys can play at home. You ready, John? All right, here we go. All right, here it is. First one, okay, three words. First word is a, a small word, uh, and no, it's a little word, it's a little, big, little, little, little's the word, okay, little. Second word, little, little drum, drummer, drum, a little drummer boy, yeah. <laughs> happened. Okay. Here we go. All right. Also three words. First word sounds like uh, neck. Neck uh, sounds like neck. Uh, 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 wreck. Uh, spec. Uh, uh, deck. Uh, deck. Deck. Three, deck the halls. Yes. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. La 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 Alright, what do we got? Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Here we go. How many? One, two, the six? Six words. First word is flapping bird singing angel, angel. Yes, angel. Angel, fourth word, ear, or sounds like? Okay, <laughs> sounds like ear. Uh, oh, you hearing, you hearing, angels hear, angels something, something here. Angels, uh, we have heard on high. No. John, you did a great job. I, you know, I'm glad that we figured out a way around your voice problem for the beginning of the show, but we still have a whole half of the show left to do. What? You got some, an idea? What is it? Oh, six words? Okay, here we go. First first word is a small word. Uh, uh, and, uh, are, uh, it, it's, it, it. Uh, it's... Bible time. Bible story time, Bible time, Bible story time. Bible time. Oh, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, fellas, how are things? Uh, we're mostly fine, but uh, John has lost his voice. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, what are we talking about today, Kellen? Well, we're talking about a pair of very important cousins, Elizabeth and Mary. Let's start with Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, well, he was a priest, and they both faithfully followed God. They wanted children, but they didn't have any. And then one day... What is this? Hello, Kellen. This is Diane DeWitt with Ancient News, where we only cover the oldest possible news. Later, swatch watches. 
fading fad, or forever fashion. But first, an angel sighting in Judea. We go now live to the scene. Elizabeth and Zachariah, describe for our viewers exactly what you saw. Oh, I didn't see it myself. Zechariah did, but he can't talk. Can you tell us what happened? Yes. Today, Zechariah was chosen to burn incense to God in the temple, and when he went in there, an angel appeared to him. Shocking news. What did the angel say? He said, my name is Gabriel. And he said, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife will have a child. You must name him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and he will bring back many people to God. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely. Now, why can't he talk? Is he shy? No. He didn't believe the angel when he said that God would give us a child at our age. And so God said that he would not be able to speak until our son is born. Remarkable story. Back to you, Kellen. In spite of how weird all of that was, that's exactly what went down. The angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah and told him that he would be blessed with a son. And that son would grow up to be... Again. Diane Duet here again with Ancient News. Later, a foolproof solution to your unwound cassettes. But first, another angel sighting. This time in Nazareth, we go live to the scene. Mary, tell us about your angel sighting. Well, he said that the Lord was blessing me in a very special way, which was wonderful, but so surprising. I I'm no one special. I just love the Lord with all my heart. Incredible. Was there more? Oh, yes. He said that I would get pregnant soon with a son. Was this angel by any chance named Gabriel? Yes. How did you know? I'm an exceptional reporter. Please continue. Well, he told me I must call my baby Jesus and that he would be the Son of God, that the Holy Spirit would make this happen. And did he offer any evidence for his claim? Well, he told me my cousin Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though she's old. Actually, I think we've got Elizabeth. Elizabeth, are you there? Mary, can you hear me? Yes, I can. You're pregnant? This is incredible. Oh, just talking to you, I felt the baby jump inside me. God has blessed you more than other women, and blessed is the child you will have. Uh, this is amazing. I, I have to go tell Joseph. Back to you, Kellen. So, you might have guessed already, but that was Mary, Jesus' mom. Both she and her relatives were visited by the angel Gabriel, and they both ended up having very important children. I kind of thought that was going to happen. Hello, Callan. It's Diane DeWitt here with Ancient News. Perhaps you remember the story of Elizabeth, who everyone thought was too old to have a child. Of course I remember. You just told us about it. I just go where the news is, Callan. And the news today is that Elizabeth and Zachariah's baby has been born. <laughs> His name is John. His name is John. <laughs> it's wonderful. As you can see, Zechariah can speak again. <laughs> I can't talk again. I can't talk again. I can't talk. His name is John. <laughs> People wanted us to name our son Zechariah as well, but we did what the angel said. John is a good name. A happy conclusion to an amazing story. It was wonderful to see you again, Mr. and Mrs. The Baptist. Zechariah and Elizabeth the Baptist. The Baptist is our last name, John yeah. the Baptist. We, we got it. Up next, Chicken Crosses Road. Why? Find out after the break. Kellen? So, obviously, their last name wasn't the Baptist, but they were John the Baptist's parents. John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Jesus, was born to parents that no one would have ever expected, just like how Jesus was born to Mary, miraculously. With God, anything is possible, and that's still true today. When God is involved, miracles can happen. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Kellen. It's pretty amazing, right, John? Oh, 
How's your voice doing? <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I hear that works. Cool. That's a, that's a lot of honey. Today's question is, what's the most amazing thing you've ever seen? Oh, yeah. Serious answer or joke answer? Mm, serious. All right. The solar eclipse a few years back was amazing. No, joke. Okay. The container store. <laughs> the Yeah, there really is something to put everything in at the container store. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. What about you? <gasps> oh, <clears throat> I went to the Grand Canyon when I was a kid and was absolutely blown away by it. I mean, I know it's just a big hole in the ground, but still, it's very grand. I'm glad your voice is back. You know, I miss our back and forth. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this was the So-and-So Show. What's the big idea? Hey! What's the big idea? Anything is possible with God. Christmas lights shine